Act one, scene one, mid-morning, a theater space that looks like organized chaos. There are ladders leaning against walls, theater lights on the ground, and two prop tables stacked precariously with props from the last show. Plastic bins overflow with costume pieces. A clothes rack with coats, capes, and scarves, and a ghost light is the only light on stage. A six-foot folding table with mismatched chairs is center stage, a whiteboard that has show dates on it. It's propped up on a chair at the head of the table. Grace enters stage left into the dark. She uses her phone flashlight to cross stage right. She goes off stage and a second later, theater lights come on. There's a knock on the backstage door. Carol enters and comes very close to touching Grace as she enters and moves to the table. A moment later, Kathy and Mark enter together. They both carry a travel cup and a bottle of water or juice. Kathy has a grocery bag. Morning. Good morning, dear lassie. I need more coffee. Can we make a pot? Yeah, the pot's still in the dressing room. Coffee's inside the top hat with the flower popping out of it on the costume shelves. Somewhere over there. Is coffee such a valuable product? You have to hide it, lassie. I'm not hiding it. That's where it lives. And where do you keep the whiskey? In a boot? That'd be fine. How do you do? I suppose a rainy day like this will bring Blessings for a good theatrical season. Yes. Although I have nothing to toast this auspicious occasion with but my travel cup of cold coffee. I'll tip my cup to you and bless you with a saying from the old country. May you escape the gallows, avoid distress, and be as healthy as a trout. Someone please make him stop. <laughs> Too early for dialects? Yes. yes. Three writers and a producer walk into a bar. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that joke has never been funny. It's funny how I tell it. It's all about timing. Which you don't have. And talent. Which is questionable. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Can we get started? Come on. Like I said, timing is everything. <laughs> you didn't say that. She just did. <laughs> he said. It's all about the timing. Ugh. Come on. Actually, <laughs> the bottom line is you were trying to be cute and it failed. Then you tried to be funny and it failed again. So, Mr. the <laughs> wordsmith, when your better half <laughs> is, I, says, says it's all about time, it has everything to do with all of this. You're going to be like this all friggin' day? My guess is yes. So I can't say anything right. Can't do anything right. No response, even from my wife. Wow, really, I mean, just really. Moving on. So, we open the season with a Shakespeare. Oh my God, why? That leaves one play per writer for the rest of the season. No, it doesn't. It's a four show season. There are three writers at the table. And a producer. But I'm bum. Now that's timing. Damn, tough crowd. There are only two openings. Uh, you'll have to fight it out. Well, the, the math doesn't add up, boss. Shakespeare plus three more plays equals... I can count, Carol. Uh, we have the obligatory Black History Month play. You do realize that I'm Black. I'm Black, too. <laughs> In person, but not on paper. Girl, what's that supposed to mean? The plays are Black. Snap. I'm a black playwright. Who writes white? That's a fact. Sorry, it's supposed to be subtext. Really? You people cannot stay focused. You people? Why is everyone being so damn sensitive? Don't look at me. Listen, you are both black, but you hunt a Black History Month kind of black that the theater wants. Black History Month is about famous and typically dead black writers, but... Now, can we get back to Shakespeare? So if we aren't black enough. And obviously we are still alive. Why are we even here? Like I said, there are two more slots and I'm hoping two out of the three of you will fit the bill. Well, that leaves me out. All you have to do is sneeze and they'll produce your plays. Mm, jealous much? Uh, moving on. I'm not finished with this, Carol most of your household chores. Oh, snap. 
know myself, you know. Bam bam. Sorry. Keep it up, and your white ass is gonna be walking home. I was just not another word. Twelfth night's always a winner. Hold up, I still want to talk about the Black History Month play. We can talk about it later. I'm going to walk if we don't. I wouldn't make that threat if you don't mean it. Let her walk, I got you. I'm more than happy to take that first or second slot. She's tidying. That is never a good sign. She can clean all she wants. I'm not changing my agenda because she has some kind of self-involved racial issue. Lord, woman, do you have no sense uh, racial insensitivity? I don't have time for all this mess. Can we get back to the first slot? I don't want to be doing this tomorrow. Agreed. Shakespeare is overdone and overrated. Yeah, I'm okay with Shakespeare. All right, maybe not Twelfth Night. Macbeth. Get out. It's a superstition. Out. Come on, it's raining out there hard. Out. Really hard. Out. Out. Ugh, that's so nasty. Ugh. Quote. You desire we be better strangers. I'm wet and will catch my death and it'll be all your fault. Mark, mark my words. Uh. <laughs> God. You can't do Twelfth Night without addressing the elephant in the room. Which is? Both of Olivia and Orsino are bisexual. Antonio was gay. So there's a pretty good chance Viola is gender fluid. Oh, that is a stretch. Marcino was in love with Cesario. He loved a boy. His feelings aren't going to change just because she puts on a dress. Olivia is not so shallow that she falls in love with looks alone. She felt something for Cesario. She married Sebastian, but there is no way she loves him. She doesn't even know him. And Antonio? Dude puts his life on the line for what? Brotherly love? No mm -hmm. way. He's in romantic love with Sebastian, but every single production glosses over it. It's a fan favorite, the cash cow. It's a problem play with no different than most of his plays. Which is why I say he's overrated. His plays aren't aging well. Is that the standard? That a play has to age well? Yes, the audience needs to be able to relate to the characters. Does anyone really relate to Shakespeare anymore? His characters are relatable, but some of his plots, Taming of the Shrew, Merchant of Venice, Othello, the stories are offensive. We can't do them as they are. Well, maybe you'd have to put in a trigger warning. I am not putting in a trigger warning. Why is everyone so damn sensitive these days? What's wrong with Othello? You can't be serious. We could do a write-off. Think about it. We could rewrite all the problem plays and see where they lead us. <laughs> no. Desdemona admits to dropping the handkerchief. It won't make a difference. She still dies. Because the Moor is portrayed as an animal? Because Iago will use the same logic. Desdemona <laughs> didn't lose it. She either threw it away because she doesn't care about him or she gave it away to her lover. No matter what story is told, Iago's jealousy will poison Othello's mind. And in the end, he will kill his wife. He's supposed to be this great warrior, but he can't recognize when he's being manipulated. Mm, he's thinking first with his pride and second with his dick. And he isn't the only Shakespearean character to do so. She it sounds like a lot of men I know. The only <laughs> male identifying person in the room, my dick and I are offended. People love Shakespeare. We know, cash cow. So can't we right. just give them to the Shakespeare festivals? There are millions of other playwrights. Even if you want a public domain writer, why not pick someone else? Oscar Wilde, Isben, Agatha Christie. Fuck that, fuck that. Why are we always looking for, toward white Eurocentric writers? Why are they the gold standards? How about Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or even Alexander Dumas? And I'm not talking about the Three Musketeers. There yeah. are plenty of non-white writers in the public domain. How about Romeo and Juliet? Are you even listening? The better question is to ask is, do I care? And uh, no, I don't. If we do R and J from the mother's perspective, why would that be any different? Because mothers look at things from a different perspective. Oh, I wouldn't know. This theater is my baby. Okay, Mark, here's your chance for a write-off. Writers, take your positions. On your mark, get set, 
create. The mothers are outsiders. The few isn't theirs. They married into the Montague and Capulet families. It could have been friends. They, they are friends. Best friends. Who want to see an end to the feud. They plot. To, to marry off the children. Which would end the feud. All right, go. Do I have an Italian accent? I never know with Shakespeare. People have this thing about British accents, but the setting is Italy. No comment? Okay. The hollow ground, two mothers planned to start to bring an end to the too long held ancient grudge. Meandering among the tombs, they put fear aside and take hand to heart to match their kids with just a little nudge. Ugh. Very wordy. It's a prologue. Ugh. I never liked the friar. No, I'm not a fan of Friar. His characters are so useless. No offense. <laughs> he can't just say that they are meeting in the cemetery. He has to go on and on. Show, not tell, right? Playwright 101. Take a seat, Mark. You're out. I thumb my nose at you. Sit down. You're rude. Oh, whatever. Okay, ready? Get set. Create. Majid is done, and you? My part as well. I turned my impressionable child against the show in his Paris by singing his praises and remarking on how handsome he is. <laughs> I went on and on about what a wonderful domineering husband he'll make. <laughs> oh, how does she react? As I told you, that girl wants nothing that I want. In her mind, I know nothing and she is at my blood and she at my blushing entreaties turn her nose up and refuse to hear another word. <laughs> Paris will never capture her heart. And you, is your son set to crash the party? Yes, I dropped several hints about the party and God, forgive me, but I told him that Rosalind would be there. Foolishly, he expects to still win her heart, but I have made plans to make sure that never happens. It is no, it is of no importance. Anyway, since once he sees your daughter, he will only remember the name Juliet. Will he care about the feud between our families? But I have whispered my true feelings to him about the feud. Often I told him that the name is just a name. After all, a tomato will smell as sweet if called by another name. Hopefully he has been listening. Don't count on it. They never listen in one ear and out the other. Did I tell you the latest word I'm with my nephew? He is on the rampage again. What does he call himself these days? The Lion King. Prince of cats. Who does that? Why would anyone want to be a cat? He has a screw loose. If you ask me, I told my sister, do not drink when she, while she's pregnant. I am convinced she didn't listen. This morning, he was upset because someone stuck her, their thumb at him. Oh, he is so sensitive. Oh, so silly. My nephew no different. All of a sudden, he doesn't like his first name. Apparently, Wendell isn't sexy enough. He's going by Mercutio now. The name definitely fits his behavior. Do you know that he follows Romeo around like a puppy? I wonder if he doesn't have more of family love for my son. Well, I have one of the same of Tibot. Maybe we can make another match once this is all done. <laughs> well, if he starts to get in the way of our plans, I'm seriously considering sending him back home to his mother. Agreed. I already sent a letter to my sister to come get the boat. He is just too moody and has a horrible temperament. That child will come to a bad end, mock my words. I, I just don't have the time for it. Especially since we will hopefully be planning a wedding soon. Oh, this is so exciting. I have set out a gold mask for Romeo to wear tonight. I'll make sure Juliet has the same. They are bound to notice each other. What a cute couple they will make. Does he dance? Juliet loves to shake it up. <laughs> oh, he's not light on his feet, but he can time with the beat. I'll practice with him a little bit more tonight before he leaves. I tell you, I can't wait until this grudge is over. I honor our husband's ancestor, but meeting in the graveyard is just not fun. Yes, once it's over, we can have a real tea with sandwiches and wine <laughs> and- Does that? Oh, I have a recipe for a seven up cake that we can make together. Oh, I was thinking we can combine our lands and grow our own vegetables and send our husbands off the court 
while we wait with a glass of wine and a good book for our grandchildren to be, to be born. <laughs> oh, soon. Soon. <laughs> we'll be best friends out in the open. We won't have to hide in the cemeteries. We can walk in the public square arm in arm, go to the market together. Best friends. Family. Family. <laughs> All right. I'll do it. It practically writes itself. Uh, writing on the board is the uh, artistic director's thing. Carol girl, you know me so well. Thank you. Okay, so it's told from the mother's perspective. Does the ending change? How does this story relate to today? It's not just your style, Carol. So you can't picture how it relates to today's audience. Like I do. Kathy's really good at updating plays. She's a knack for finding the core. I can speak for myself. Uh, we all know Kathy can write. What I am asking is why rewrite this? What does it say that we embrace this old dead white male writer and ignore current and new writers whose pen is on the pulse of what is happening today? Shakespeare wrote about his contemporaries. It was why he was popular because his, his audience understood. They were, the living, they were living the lives he wrote about, or at least they understood those lives. We should do the same. I get what you're saying. I would be happy to write. No, wait. I don't want to write it. You just said that you didn't want to. Grace, let me write it. A new play set in today's world based on Romeo and Juliet, but focused on the mothers. Two friends fighting, it, fight, fighting to bring their families back together. Mothers who know what happens when you don't have support. Mothers who want the best for their children and see that the way out isn't always the, e the easiest. I can even toss in some iambic pentameter if it will make you feel better. Kathy already offered, and she has more experience with verse. White verse, maybe. But I have just as much experience with spoken word and rap. Rap that is lyrical, thoughtful, and complex. The only thing, the only difference between rap and a sonnet is the beat. Hmm. Hands to the heavens, no man, no weapon formed against us. Yes, glory is destined. Every day, women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice is just a position in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. One son died. His spirit is revisiting us. Truant, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walk through Ferguson with our hands up. When we go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Come and wrapped it. And he is much more relevant than good old dead William. I mean, for me, his words cling to my soul. Listen, Grace, the basics of Romeo and Juliet is an urban story. Mothers tired of the violence, wanting the best for their children. Mothers who will do anything to keep their child from making the same mistakes. Grace, you know my work, or I wouldn't be at this table. This story is a Black story. I can write this play. I said I'd write it. I like Carol's idea better. I can probably get a grant. Black, urban, violence prevention, teen sex. Yeah. You want to be my dramaturg? Why is everyone looking at me? Yes, Carol, I will be your dramaturg since God knows you'll need one. That's one for the living writers and zero for the dead. Put it on the whiteboard. Slot one is filled. Don't boss me. All right, okay, let's talk slot two. Uh, we should still pick a public domain play. Maybe a comedy? This is ridiculous. You don't get it, do you? I didn't start a theatre company to spend my time haggling over budgets and questioning if something is politically right or if everything and everyone has an equal opportunity for this thing or that. I started this company because I just loved sitting in an audience and being transported to a different place or time, sitting for two hours in someone else's skin. I started this theatre company and I thought I would get all of those stories and even more. I would get to be there watching as the cast conjured up new worlds of possibilities. It, it's wonderful. I, I can't say it isn't, but there's also been a lot of shit to deal with. 
board member egos, insurance, workers, comp, unions, and complaints, complaints, constant complaints that I'm not doing enough, that I'm not giving enough, that I'm not moving fast enough with the times. Look, I want to be inclusive. For fuck's sake, inclusivity is theatre at its best, isn't it? Why? Why aren't we just artists? Why do we have to be something more? Yes, Mark, we need to do a public domain play because it keeps the budget from soaring out of control so that the theatre can pay a working wage to everyone involved because apparently everybody wants to be paid to do what they love. So why doesn't anyone see that bigger, bigger picture? I can't always be pandering to all these needs and wants. And I just want you to do what I'm telling you to do. <sighs> Sure, have a Come flair on. for the dramatic. Have you considered acting? Oh, for fuck's sake. Lights go out. Act one, scene two. Same day, moments later. The stage is dark. Cell phone flashlights move about the stage. Eventually, the cell lights are off stage and are replaced with noises and the grumblings of Carol and Grace walking into props or chairs. Ow. <laughs> Is the fuse box stage left or, or house left? Stage left. No, maybe house left. Oh, shit, I don't remember. It's on the wall between the stage right dressing room door and the bathroom door. How do you know that? How does he know that? Who cares? We found it. Thanks, Mark. Going to check the mail. Going to make out is more like it. <laughs> we heard that. You laughed at me. I didn't laugh. What did you want me to do? You should have said something. Supportive. I'm your wife. Not when we're working. 27 freaking years. Not when we're working. Two kids. We agreed that the theater is a neutral space for our relationship. That's not what you want. Look, I want it, but you should have backed me up, taken my side as a colleague. She practically called me some kind of Uncle Tom playwright. You're a good writer. You know that. You produce more often than both Carol and I put together. Plus, I love you as a colleague. She said it for a reason. She acts like I'm trying to be white or something. She wasn't trying to be mean. Well, she was. You're overreacting. Don't tell me how to feel. She said it and she believed it. What? Spit it out. Your characters could be anyone. They're not specifically black. My characters are relatable to any audience. But who is your audience? Who are you telling your story to? Why is everyone ganging up on me? I'm on your side. I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you. I gave you 18 years of my life to- I know your white ass is not quoting Rose from Fences to me. I got a life too. Don't you think I had dreams, too? Okay, okay. It's such a great role. Doesn't it bother you that as a Black playwright, only half the time most of the characters in your plays don't even, aren't even played by Black actors? I don't describe my characters except for their age. Maybe something about their accents, but I never mention their race. I don't write for the fuck of it. I write to get produced. A little Neil Simon and Lynn Nataj mixed together with a dash of humor than politic and a sprinkle of god agnosticism makes me one part of the 13% female identifying playwrights getting produced. And out of that 13%, maybe, just maybe 3% are non-white writers. So getting produced is the goal, the only goal. And just a reminder, those royalty checks have allowed us to invest in- I get it, I do. But what have you given up to be one of the 3%? I love you and I'm hella proud. It is just fucking horrible that so few women, even fewer black women playwrights are produced. You are a better writer than anyone I know. You don't have to play their game anymore. Why not write more from a black perspective? Don't you get it? That's how I got my spot. I get that. But now you can write anything. So you think that- since I'm Black, I'm only supposed to write Black characters? The audience that attend my plays relate to my characters because they have the same concerns. They see themselves. But does the audience learn anything about themselves? They leave the theater feeling a little more empathy. They are only seeing themselves. Playwright's job is to tell a story. Playwright's job is more than that. No, it isn't. 
I am not interested in using my play to conjole them into becoming better people. And what exactly is a Black play? My plays deal with women, mothers, people getting through life with the help of or detriment of friends or family. Yes, white actors could play these roles, but so could Black, Asian, and Latinx. That isn't true. Cultural and gender identity informs how we move through life. You said it yourself last week, dealing with that teacher at Riley School. It's different because he's a black boy. Your characters are not the same people. They can't be. Says the white man to the black woman. Says the husband to his wife. Look, I like my characters. I write them through my own experiences. It's my imagination, the dreams I have at night. You don't dream in white, do you? You've always been this proud black woman. And I'm seeing this part of you that is reluctant. It's like you aren't sure of yourself. You aren't confident that if you wrote. If more black people came to the theater, I could write plays that speak to, to them. And like, And if you more writers wrote black plays, the audience could relate to it. It works both ways. Don't do that. Don't blame the audience because you can't write black char characters. I write what I know. The characters are me. Then why are white people playing you? You try much? If I had said the characters were black, my stories might never see a stage. White theaters don't want black love stories or black family plays. White theaters either want Driving Miss Daisy or Racial Reckoning. I don't say my characters are white or any white race. I just put the age of the character. If the literary manager reads my play and is able to see the characters on their stage, who do you think they see? They see people that look like them. I can count on one hand the names of black or brown literary managers. It's not like when they choose one of my plays, they ask me who should play my roles. Fact is they probably make a point of not asking me. Grace, if I submitted one of my plays to you and specified the character's race. Mm, maybe I would have still chosen it. I don't know. It's likely I would have viewed the characters differently. But you're the playwright. If you want to make sure your characters are cast in a specific play, then it's your responsibility to say so. Wait. If racial identity isn't listed, do you just assume white? Pretty much. Yeah. That answers my question then. My plays wouldn't have been produced here. You're putting words in my mouth. You're shifting the blame. If you don't have enough confidence in your writing to call out the identity of your characters, why am I to blame? I'm not surprised that Grace thinks white. I am more surprised that you do. But when I think of it, I don't ever remember seeing any of your plays at any of the black theaters. My plays aren't centered around racism, slave times, or celebrating the black to do this or that. Listen up, little Miss Judgy. Celebrating our contributions to this or that on stage is a blessing. No one is celebrating us. Hell, for too long, you'd have thought Blacks had anything to do with building this country and moving it forward. Science, engineering, farming, music, and sport. Our hands have had a, had a part in all of it. And yes, slavery, poverty, and racism is also a part of our story. Do you think there are topics that aren't worthy to be on stage? They aren't stories worthy of being told? We are not invisible. No, we are not. But we also have more to us than that. There's so many possibilities. Where are our love stories, our comedies, our horror stories? Those stories exist. They are being written, just not by you. When you refuse to identify your characters as Black, you rob us of those possibilities. I'm doing my best. You can do better. I know your story, Kathy. You may have grown up in a white neighborhood, but you did it as a black girl. You are moving through life as a black woman and mother. Where are those stories? Write it and Grace will produce it, right? I'd need to read it first. Grace, you've commissioned her work before with nothing but a phone conversation. You either trust her work or you don't, which is it? You are taking yourself out of having a play in the season? I'm talking about you doing the right thing. I can take care of my own career. Well, if that's the case, then it looks like the second slot is filled. 
I make the decisions about what goes on the board. Fine. At least give me an idea of what you're going to write, Kathy. I want to write about a romantic comedy. Really? Love can be trans transformative. Girl, please, you have been watching too much Hallmark. Sometimes what we're looking for is in front of us the whole time. Oh, my God. We might have too many Black plays. I mean, if Carol's writing a Black Mama play. Uh, you might want to back that last statement up, Grace. Black Mama play. Oh, you know what I mean? Some kind of Tyler Perry mess. Tyler Perry mess? I don't want to do it. I don't know. I, I, um, I, I don't want to do a Chitlin play. I said I was writing a love story. With a black or brown cast? You're digging yourself in even deeper. What is the issue? Don't you think black people fall in love? I was just asking, why do you people always have to get in such a huff? Ken with the you people, do you even hear yourself? Do you have a problem with an all black cast? Of course not. Black History Month theater is almost always an all black cast. At a loss for words. I thought I was in a safe space. A safe space does not mean you get to say whatever you want and we are just supposed to, to, to just take it? All I'm saying is when I think about black love stories, all I can think about is, well, nothing. Huh. Some Lifetime movies, maybe. Uh, but just a straight out theatrical love story? Are you serious? I wouldn't, would I say it if I wasn't? Never mind. We're just wasting our time. Can we get back to the business at hand? Right. Kathy, if you want to write a Black or BIPOC love story, go for it. I never wondered why you didn't add more than age to your character list, but I guess I just assumed everyone was white unless noted. So uh, not sure why that's such a problem since our audience is white. The critics are definitely white and so are most of the funders. Love stories, well, they're kind of old school, like Carol said, predictable. Maybe seeing black people in a romantic love story will be noldy enough to draw an audience. I'm gonna mentally erase your last statement. If theater doesn't change and attract a younger BIPOC audience, there won't be any theater. Who the fuck cares about newspaper critics? They are non-entities that only review shows in their safety zones. Anyone on social media thinks they're a fucking critic. The only people reading the paper anyway are mostly old folks. The people we need to attract, the new audience don't give a shit about critics. Not sure I agree. I haven't liked newspapers. Feel the paper, smell the ink. Yeah, spare us your kinky behavior. You know you like it. <laughs> I will add though that funders are more on top of it than you think. They're looking to see how theater impacts and improves community. So Grace, are you gonna write that on the board? Do not push me. Hand me that marker. Okay, right, moving on. Act one, scene three, same day. Mark, Carol, Grace, and Kathy sit at the conference table. It is late afternoon. A pizza box, two bottles of wine, and a huge roll of paper towels are on the table. Kathy sits closest to the whiteboard. Hey, should we check in? Why? It's a good thing to get a feeling for the temperature of the room. Ugh. Let's just imagine that we already had one. Look, it's been a crazy day. I'll go first. Did you all not hear me? We hear you and acknowledge you. Uh... Circle up. Breathe in positivity and healing and exhale out all negative energy. <laughs> Breathe in and fill your being with light. Oh, exhale. Man and release all obstacles. When you're present and ready, let us know your emotional status and if you need anything from this group. My needs are not being met. There has been a bunch of subtext and innuendo going on. I don't know what it is, but something is up. I feel like a shoe is about to drop and personally, I prefer my drama on stage only. We are on stage. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Carol. We hear you and acknowledge you. Anyone else? Kathy? No, I'm good. A little tired, but my needs are met. You? Yes, I am well. I feel that my needs are being met, but I recognize things aren't always as they seem. 
more subtext. I get what you're saying, but isn't drama a bit more fun? Okay, let's shake it off and begin. <laughs> hey, I'm calling my union rep. I am your union rep. <laughs> I feel like I'm being bamboozled into shows that I don't feel comfortable with. Circle's over. Should have spoken up. Do we need to regroup? The shows will bring in a bigger, more diverse audience. Really, Grace, you should not look a gift horse in the mouth. Plus, it's a Trojan horse. Uh, this is ridiculous. We need to... No one is listening to me. I do not want to do so many Black shows. This is not a Black theater company. Grace, I... Don't patronize me. This is my theater. Grace, I need to tell you something. I don't want to hear it. No one is listening to me, so I am not listening to you. I have the ultimate control about what goes on on my stage. Grace, they just towed your car. What? Yep, there it goes. Towed? Why? Looks like you parked in the yellow zone. I always park there. I never get a ticket. Carol, what do you want me to do about it? <sighs> if one of us will have to give you a ride home. <sighs> God. Just breathe, Grace. It'll be okay. I can give you a ride. You can deal with the car in the morning. Not the end of the world. Says who? I'm just the messenger. Can we get started, please? It's getting late. My car! We parked in the yellow. What did you expect? Damn, Kathy, a little compassion wouldn't hurt. Sorry about the car, but nothing can be done about it until tomorrow. So let's finish picking the season. I don't like the season. When the board hears about these shows, they'll put a stop to it. This is not our audience. Both plays feature multiracial casts. Both plays are written by women of color. I'm not signing off on this. I know I wrote it up there on that whiteboard, but I might just erase it. Can we just get on with it? Did you hear what I said? Yes. We can come back to that, but right now, we're picking the third show. What are we thinking for the third slot? Let me guess. Grace wants a public domain play. Laugh all you want, but not paying royalties for every show is never a bad idea. It's also safer. Pick from the tried and true and you can pretty much fill all the seats. How about a holiday show? I don't think the Cedar's ever done one. I hate a Christmas carol. Velveteen Rabbit? Depressing. Let's think it out. Who goes to holiday shows? People with kids? Grandparents? Mm -hmm. Is it a date thing? Okay, maybe not a date thing. Maybe a girls' night? <laughs> okay, not that. So just families. Who do families watch together during the holidays? That we can produce for free. I always love Little Woman. How about Cinderella? I'm okay with that, as long as it isn't the musical. Oh, and just so you know, Cinderella is white. If she was supposed to be a brown or black girl, her name would have been something different. Cinderella can be anybody. Not in my theater. In my theater, she's definitely white and preferably perky. And that, that is final. The other plays are diverse enough for the whole season. Why do you all of a sudden care anyway? What's that supposed to mean? I've always cared. Spare me. You knew exactly what you were doing when you left off the ethnicity of your characters. I do. It isn't who I want to be. I'm proud to be Black. I had this other goal, but now all I want is to show my kids that being Black is not some sort of punishment, that being Black is beautiful. We have happy endings too. Well, you can have your kumbaya somewhere else. You can't be serious. You know, every play doesn't have to be a gap ad. Come on. Theater should represent the community. Forget it. How about we just uh, skip Cinderella? Fine with me. I just hated that story. Ditto. I don't need to see another codependent young woman unable to save herself without a man. I think a Christmas show is still a good idea. A holiday show. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, uh, Miracle on 34th Street, A Tuna Christmas? It's a wonderful life. Wonderful life could work. It isn't super specific to Christmas. Imagine angels can get their wings at any time of the year. I want a Christmas show. Everyone in our audience doesn't celebrate Christmas. Then they can attend a different show. Maybe four one acts each focus on a different winter holiday. Nope. I like Christmas. I'm tired of trying to please everyone. My theater, my rules. This is ridiculous. I'm telling her. This isn't your theater. 
If you ever read the board minutes, you know that this building was sold months ago. If you ever fucking thought about anything but your own damn ego, you'd have noticed what is happening in the complex. I skimmed the minutes and I don't give a shit who owns the space. <laughs> Rent was waived so a new lease could be negotiated. Should have been paying attention. I don't give a You should give a shit. Take your head out of the sand. Who the fuck do you think you are telling me how to run my theater? I may not have gone to all the board meetings, but I read those minutes. Then you'll know that the new lease is dependent on the theater company being more inclusive. <laughs> that is bullshit and probably illegal. I have the new owner's number here somewhere. Fucking woke assholes thinking they can tell me how to run my theater. And the other shoe drops. Act two, scene one, same day, late night, same theater space. Chinese takeaway boxes are all over the table. Grace is pacing the floor while Mark fixes himself a cup of coffee and deliberates over which donut to grab. Where are they? Is this CP time? CP time? You know, colored people time or late as I like to call it. I know what CP time is. You're buying more coffee. Kathy may own the theater building, but it's still my theater company. Mine? I, I'm being bullied. That's what I think. What, what she's doing is probably illegal. I might call Fox News about it. <laughs> I called David. He said the lease hasn't even been signed. No, it hasn't. Grace, times have changed. The theater company has to keep up with the way our community is changing and hopefully become a leader. We need to bring it to the now. Oh, spare me the too cool for the room terminology. We're in a huge global shift. How people see the world is changing. All of this. Oh, A, spare me. And B, what is it you want me to do that you think I'm not doing? Spell it out. It just isn't enough to put a banner on the webpage that you are down with the cause. Get to the point. The theater company's too white. Against my better judgment, I am producing two black plays this season, half my season. You should be applauding me. FYI, hiring talented writers to fill your seats with new audience members is a win. But tell me who is gonna direct, light, costume, and design those black shows? I've never seen any black or brown people behind the curtain since I've been a part of the theater company. Every posted job encourages- You don't reach out. Job. You expect them to come to you. Oh, that's usually- how it works. You post a job and people apply. People apply who see the ad. We can go on and on like this. Just tell me what you want. I want you to step down. <laughs> You've run this company since inception. <laughs> because I started it. It is time to let someone else take over. Why would I do that? You can transition out slowly, but theater should be fresh. Fresh eyes can take the company to the next level. I should step aside because I'm not brown. Because I'm a certain age. Don't put words in my mouth. Um, what word should I use? You know the statistics? Theater gatekeepers are mostly white. Yes, and male. You have an opportunity to change the dynamic. <sighs> Bringing in a person of color will shift the dynamic. If a black or brown person wants to be an artistic director, they are more than welcome to start a theater company. More power to them. That's what I did, and look where it got me. Why are you taking this personally? Oh, this is it personal, you fucking fuck. This company is who I am. 25 years running, 100 shows. I've put everything into this company, and if you don't like me as a leader, you can find another theatre company to work with. Your arrogance. Believe your arrogance, you... Shit, where, where, I can't believe it. Any, if anything speaks of white cis male privilege, it's you telling me, a lesbian woman, that I should quit. I didn't say quit exactly. I said step down. Co-lead. Train the next person and then move on. I don't know. Volunteer somewhere. Join a board. Not this board, of course. Stop. Another board somewhere. Stop. I hear Do not say another word. Grace, I know you're pissed off, but hear me out. You are appreciated. Truly, you are loved by many and have done a great job. We all have a shelf life and you've hit yours. What 
Grace, calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Fear is about risks, and you won't step out of your lane you're in. The way you cast, the people you hire, yes, this upcoming season looks different with two new plays written by black authors. But you wouldn't have even considered it if Kathy and Carol hadn't pushed you. If we see you, white American theater hadn't called you out. No. Changes didn't come to you organically. You've never invited any writers of color to a season prep meeting before this upcoming season. You never had a problem with it before. Plus, I have produced both Carol and Kathy in past seasons. Carol, once in 15 years. And as we've already noted, you've cast all my wife's plays with white actors. Plus, they aren't the only talented BIPOC writers in the area. You've never produced any Asian plays, Latinx, LGBTQ. I've produced LGBTQ plays, Carol and August Wilson. I produce plays I like. It's the perk of having your own theater company. Grace, Grace, I'm warning you. Just think about what you're gonna do. Please don't kill me. I swear to God, I'll haunt you. You'll never get a moment's rest. Kathy will sue you. Get out of my theater company. It's actually not your theater company. Yes, it is. It's a 501c3. Whose side are you on? This is not my doing. The theater has a board of directors that ulti ultimately approve all decisions, including who the artistic director is. Not going well, I take it. Easing into it. You call me asking me to step aside, easing into it? He talked about me like I was a loaf of bread past its use-by date. Oh, smooth. I don't understand what is happening happening I thought we were all friends we are friends but the board wants to move in a different direction they voted you out we had to fight to get this last season and honestly after this morning I'm regretting that decision no one said anything to me I just saw most of the board days ago at the farmer's market shit I just talked to the board president last night they aren't up for the dirty work but they want to change the direction of the company they consider you more of a roadblock than a, hmm. well, roadblock pretty much says it all. They held an emergency meeting. But I haven't done anything wrong. They have no grounds. Either have a wonderful last season and help you train your successor, you can leave now. Just like that. This is my theater company. If you didn't want to give up control, you should have never gone down the 501c3 road. You leaving is the best thing for the company. I need to sit down. Feeling okay? Oh, don't get your hopes up. I'm not dying. Grace, you're still young-ish. You can get a different job, maybe with a bigger theater company if you want. <clears throat> you know this, this couldn't last forever. We had to know it couldn't last. Forever. Why would I know that? How How is that, some, that something that I started, that I built up, can be taken away from me? It grew and took on its own, a life of its own. Like, I know you don't get it, but it really is for the best. They didn't give me an opportunity to change. Oh, hold up. That's not true. For over a year, you refused to even acknowledge that racism existed in theater. For longer than that, you have cast Black actors in only one show per year during Black History Month. I have Black actor friends that don't even bother auditioning for you because it's just a waste of time. It isn't my fault if they aren't right for the role. As your woman, as your woman, I'm telling you that if you didn't want to change, if you didn't want to change because you didn't see the need to, when the George Floyd murder happened, the artists, the board, the community, we wanted our theater to take a stand. We needed the theater to help us process our feelings. You said no. You refused to even hold a stage reading of a play that addressed police violence. You refused to let the Black History Month cast pass the hat after the show to collect donations in support of justice reform. I don't think I like you right now. I'm okay with that. But I feel I should remind you that I am your ride home. Grace, you have been a roadblock to helping the theater grow within our community. 
Our town is ready to see new works by a diverse group of writers. Our community wants us to pull back the curtain and let them see the directors and designers that reflect the community. Bottom line is we're losing our potential audience to theaters from out of town because you still want to produce all white productions about issues that people of color and LGBTQ plus members have absolutely no interest in. You've pig-headedly refused to let potential patrons see themselves on stage. Maybe with a person of color leading the company, we could- I need to tell you, I've been unsure how to say this, but, but I feel you should know. I'm black. I guess I've been unknowingly passing. I did my DNA. I'm 12% from various African nations, but mostly Nigeria. I have no words. So now you're identifying as black. So are you black in public or only at this table? I'm not sure how I feel about it. What I think is it's a rather new for me. It explains a lot though. How? How I gravitate towards black women. My love of gumbo with okra. Oh, okra, <laughs> Lord, give me strings. My love of gospel. Oh, girl, you are from Louisiana. You are a Southerner. Identity can be tricky. You can't just toss on racial identity like it's a coat. You identify as Black, then that's that. So just so we're clear, identifying as Black doesn't give you the right to toss around stereotypes about Black people or Black theater. Yeah, especially now that this is a black theater company. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that the theater is a black theater exactly. You are I'm... identifying as black. And according to you, this is your theater. It's your theater. That's true. But I haven't mentioned that to anyone but you three. So why now? It's complicated. I think it's best to... Because she got caught being racist and figured if she says she was black, she'd be given a pass. She says she's black, she thinks she'll keep her job. I deserve better than this. I'll give you that. You do deserve better, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people can say the same thing about how you treated them. When it's all said and done, it, does, it hasn't changed anything. It's your behavior that's got you fired. Fired? How fucked up is that? I thought you wanted me to quit. It's preferable, but if you don't quit, then you're fired. Are you gluten intolerant? Now you're telling me what I can eat? If you agree to train someone- this cannot be happening to me. <laughs> the board treating you like this is wrong. And I was not in favor of it, but it is what it is. You can decide to go out how you can decide though, how you, how you wanna go out. Make the choice to go out on top. Make sure people remember that it was you that got this theater to where it is. Hell, make them throw you a, a, a dinner and put up a plaque somewhere. It never occurred to me that I wouldn't be here forever. Will you make a graceful exit? Not the time. Way too soon. I can now myself. Yeah, we know, but do try. So what do I do? Oh, oh my God, stomach. Here, you take a cruise. Here, chew on this. It'll help your stomach. Come on now. No, oh, it's gonna be okay. David is waiting for your call, but the board wants you to write a letter announcing your decision. They want to get a press release out this week. What's the rush? We have to finish picking out a season. We still haven't done that yet. Are you sure you want to finish that now? Oh, apparently it's my last season. So yes, I want to pick these last shows. Hold up, I know that look. You're not going to cry, are you? I'm the only one that gets to cry around here. It's been a shitty day and I don't feel like comforting you. <laughs> oh, well, don't take it personally. She's my ride or die, but we do not do theater well together. We start off well, but it doesn't take long before we just get on each other's nerves. Mm, I can tell. Can I get you anything? Cyanide? With lemon? You're a good writer, you know. Thank you. You want to write my farewell email? I think a letter is more personal. 
So what if it takes a day or two to arrive? <laughs> Builds tension. Followed by release. Drama. Exactly. Is there any paper around here? Oh, I'll get it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I love stationery. I use it to turn writers down. Well, I use it when I'm turning down promising writers. For the schlock, I just send an email. Carol has a few letters, but not you. I produced all of your submissions. I suppose you could be considered our resident playwright. Huh. So what do you say in your rejection letters? Uh, nothing much. I tell them that I believe in their talent. I might even mention a line from their play. I encourage them to keep writing, blah, blah. Uh, that I look forward to working with them, but just not this season, you know. Is something wrong? No, just lost in my thoughts, I guess. All right, should we start? We might be able to finish before Mark and Carol return. Hmm. Dear Board of Traitors. Okay, probably not the best beginning even though it's true. How about, dear board members, I write this letter to inform you that after 25 years, I will be stepping away. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Why, why aren't you more proud of your work? If I was produced as much as you were, I'd be singing it from the rooftops. I'm proud of my plays. I just... I should have insisted that the cast be at least diverse and at least refle reflect my worldviews. You married a white man. You live in a mostly white town. Maybe that is your worldview. I'm not white. Well, who really is white these days? We can thank those DNA sites for that tip bit of information. Maybe your desire to be produced outweighed your desire to tell your truth as a black writer. Being produced was everything. But I don't want to do that anymore if that means I don't see myself on the stage. I want to see my plays realized by actors of color. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that is the way to move forward. Those theaters that produced you in the past, mine included, will find it pretty hard to turn you down your plays just because you call out the character's identity. You think so? Well, I can't say for sure, but you can only give it a try. You know, I'm taking a break from writing after this coming season. See what other dreams I can make come true. <laughs> Spoken like a true artist. Ugh. Okay, back to this letter. It has been my privilege to birth this theatre company and watch it grow. 25 years is nothing to sneeze at. I understand that soon there will be a new artistic director to take over the helm of this magnificent vessel. Uh, I look forward to working and training this person once the position has been filled. Sincerely, me. Thoughts, uh, corrections? Hmm, I like it. The position is filled. The board hired a new artistic director. <laughs> Gotta say, they were never this quick when it came to raising money. Who is it? Me. Fuck. You? You know me. You can trust me to do this. Trust you? You sat here listening to me to go on and on about my feelings, and even worse, letting me care about you and your insecurities. But I can trust you? I didn't go after your job. The board came to me. Because you own the building. No, they know me. They know my work and they wanted a fresh set of eyes. Or they wanted a brown-skinned AD that won't try to reinvent the wheel. Someone that will still pick the shows they love but is black so no one can say anything. They want theatre that entertains, not informs. They feel safe with you. I am more than that. If you showed up to the board meetings, you know... You know what? Never mind. I'm a produced writer. I bring credibility. Hmm. Maybe that's what the board is looking for, but maybe not. Hell, there's been a flurry of new brown and black artistic directors replacing us old white ADs. Did they tell you they fell short on fundraising again? That the theatre is hanging on by a string? I haven't taken a check in months. This theatre is sinking. And with you on board, once it sinks, it'll be on you. That's not true. 
You know, I hoped you'd be relieved that it wasn't a stranger taking over. They're just using you, probably hoping you will lower the rent or even give it rent free. That's doubtful. Either way, I'll get what I want. Which is? Turning this company into a multi-ethnic theater cooperative. There's so many other voices that deserve to be heard. Artists, like artists who never got past people like you. You kept them out of the game. So this is my chance to make things right, to open the door and damn it, nobody will stand in my way. They'll fire you after a year. You're just the new flavor of the month. They think you'll be that they think you being black will take the pressure off them. They won't have to explain why they publicly support Black Lives Matter, but privately called me to complain that too much fuss was being made about it. I won't back down if that's what you think. You know, fuck this. I just want to go home. Mm -hmm. Carol's your ride. I, I just, oh, I, I don't feel quite, oh. Grace faints, lights out in scene. Act two, scene two. A few hours later, Mark is sitting on a bunch of floor pillows wearing headphones over only one ear and typing on his laptop between eating ice cream straight from a container. Kathy and Carol are in a corner downstage. They're having a private conversation out of supposed earshot of Mark. She'll be okay. She's lying down on the equity cot. She does this every once in a while, faint. She'll wake up and act like nothing's happened, but I'll call her doctor in the morning. You've been together a long time? Five years. Mm, how do you deal? How do you live with her? She's different at home. We like you and Opie over there. We keep theater on on the stage and try and keep it from taking over the rest of our lives at home. This must be pretty hard for you being- I'll you know. get by. It will take her some time though. The theater is all she had. She has you. It is how she identifies though. She's given it all, given all she's had for so long. Like we all make sacrifices. You know, I don't think reading your plays anyone would know you were a lesbian. Same goes for your plays. If no one looked at the photo in the program, would they know you were black? We have a lot to change. Speaking out as our true selves. But maybe we can start with not doing an August Wilson play. Find another writer. I know what you're saying, but girl, he is an icon. Oh, no, I know. I love his work. I swear I do. I just think we can do something else. Make a different statement about who we want to be. This company has almost done the entire canon. So why is that so important? I mean, what does that mean? Just to say you did it? Like climbing some mountain or something or going to, to every ballpark? He's a Black national treasure. Look, enough already. He's not God. His plays are great, but I don't think the women characters are... Rose? Shh. Come on. That is a good monologue. I've been standing here with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot with you. Don't you think I ever want another thing? Do you not think I had dreams and hope? What about my life? What about me? Shit. <laughs> I would kill to play Rose. Yeah, but what does that say about Black women? Like, what is the message out there about who we are and what we feel? The women in his plays are strong they are stereotypes the saint or the sinner the seductress or the loyal wife they aren't story stereotypes shit you know you have some auntie cousin or friend that has given it all up for some man we know these women the women are the backbone of his plays just because they don't say a lot or aren't in every scene doesn't diminish their strength his focus was black men moving through a certain point in our history that was the story he, he was telling. He wrote what he wanted to write. You can't fault him for that. I'm not faulting him at all. I, mean, I know he wrote the characters for a reason. I'm just tired of seeing Black women portrayed that way. So what happens if we flip the script? Have all the main roles played by women. All female, two trains running. At one time, you couldn't get a seat in here. Had the jukebox working and everything. 
time somebody get up, somebody sit down before they can get out the door. People coming from everywhere. Everybody got to eat and everybody got to sleep. Some people don't have stoves. Some people don't have nobody to cook for them. Men whose wives done died and left them. Cook for them 30 years and lay down and die. Who gonna cook for them now? Somebody got to do it. I order four cases of chicken on Friday. On Sunday, it's gone. Fry it up, make us do boil it. <laughs> now that sounds like a woman to me. I'm just saying, it's a thought. We could still do a Wilson play. It would just be cast differently. Mm, I don't know. All of this is just tiring. Why isn't there room for all of us? Are we still talking about August? I don't know. This thing with Grace, you know, kicking her out of her, her own company. And apparently I'm no better. You said so yourself. I don't write black. I did. But maybe what I meant to say is that your characters have no soul. You are so careful with your language. No slang, no slurs, no accents. Nothing to give away who the characters are. It's true that they can be anybody, but I don't see that as a good thing. Your plays are entertaining and easily forgotten. Oh God, this day just gets crazier and crazier. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the waters. Grace, you you okay? I'm better than okay. I have found my truth. I am ready to embrace my true self. Which is listening to you and Carol's made me realize how important representation is, how I have a vital role to play in the theater. I am a strong black woman. What are you playing at, Grace? Oh, I'm not playing. If I don't get to keep my, keep my position as artistic director, I'm calling MSNBC and the New York Times and screaming as loud as I can that I'm being fired because I came out as a black woman. Have you lost your damn mind? We can do the same season we plan, but I am not going to quit. So you're back to identifying as black. Mm -hmm. Now that it serves your needs. Who the hell do you think you are? You think anyone is going to hop on your self-pity bandwagon because you put on a kente print? I am no different than you. Waking up to my black joy. Oh, oh no, Grace. You, you need to stop. Why? I'm speaking my truth. Hey, if she wants to identify as black letter, she isn't getting her job back, period. What do you say? They fired you because you're black and they hired another black woman to replace you? Grace, this is not the road you want to go down. I know you think I can't do this job, become an artistic director without your help, but I learned quickly and I'm more than capable. I have more to do. So do I. I made choices in the past about how I presented my plays that I don't regret. I told the stories I wanted to tell, and I'm okay with that. Now I have a different story to tell. I want to tell the stories of other Black and Brown playwrights. So, Grace, if you want to keep running this white theater company, go for it. You're giving up that easily? Oh, no. Far from it. You just won't have the theater space. That negotiable lease that was never signed, well, is no longer negotiable. You can pick up your stuff and get out. I'll call my lawyer. And tell them what? I built this stage. And I paid for it. You can call it reverse gentrification. The critics and the public will destroy you. Maybe, but I doubt it. Especially when they see the kinds of shows we'll be putting up. I don't want to give up my theater company. Honey, you don't have a choice. Like <sighs> I said, you can keep your theater company and your board of directors. But y'all going to have to move the fuck out because your lease is up and a new multi-ethnic theater company will be moving in. You conniving bitch. This mm. could definitely be a play. Do you actually think the subscribers will stay once I'm gone? The companies will donate when they see a season filled with plays by women of color? Give me a break. You know, I believe in our audience. Those that leave, we'll let them. We'll find our people. 
You know, August Wilson didn't write for the white audience. He wrote for people like me. His plays gave us the context to better understand our own, our own stories. But that didn't stop everybody else from coming. All those other folks sat in their seats and cried with Rose and got pulled into Aunt Esther's spells, just like us Black folk. A good play can make you feel that way, like you've been touched by the spirit. Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh. You've got to go. You know, teenager left alone, unsupervised all day. Grace, Black women are strong, and I'm going to be just fine without you. I'm sure as a newly identified Black woman, you'll be strong as well. So good luck finding a stage for your company, but this space is booked. Let the board know you changed your mind and yada, yada. Probably all for the best. Wait, wait, I, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I, I'm fine with the earlier arrangement. Really, I was only- just... No, mm -mm, that won't be necessary anymore. You know, you opened my eyes. I was afraid to step up and take this on, start something new. But I'm good. You two okay with that? Okay. Okay, well, I... Uh... It's going to be okay. Why don't you go wait in the car? I'll see you soon, my Nubian queen. <laughs> the day has been one crazy ride. If I had written this, a reader would have said it was too much drama. <laughs> so what are you going to call this new multi-ethnic theater company? No idea, but it's exciting. There's so many stories out there to be told. Writers telling tales. It's what we do. You ready to take charge? No, I, I have a lot to learn, but I'm willing to learn it. <laughs> Truth. Hey, can I call in you for advice every once in a while? Do I look like I am going anywhere? Hell, I'm already cleaning up the, the place. <laughs> it's a new day. Y'all feel that? I felt like God just walked across the stage. Maybe it was August Wilson. Hmm. Maybe it was. The end. Yeah.